Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hey, in today's episode, I wanna go through three things to do with Facebook Marketplace. And the first one is buying an item for free. Is it a good idea to do? Should you put an alert onto Facebook and then go and source that item, list it, and then sell it for a profit? Is it really that worthwhile? Well, in today's episode, I trialed that idea and I've actually come away with a pretty good result. So stick around, a little later on in the episode, I'll show you what I was able to pick up for free off Facebook Marketplace to hopefully get you thinking that it might be a good idea to put that alert for a free item and just see what you can uncover. Uh, the second one that I wanted to go through today as well is a question that I get asked on my YouTube channel quite a bit, and it is regarding the same day reselling of an item you bought off Facebook Marketplace back onto Facebook Marketplace. Is it the right thing to do? What can you do to make it not so noticeable for that previous seller to find your listing? Um, I personally think it's an okay thing. I'm gonna to talk to you about why I think it's an okay thing to do in today's episode. And then thirdly, there's a bit of a tool that Facebook Marketplace provides you, which is basically an insight on what is actually being looked at on Facebook Marketplace regularly. So I guess the top searches in certain categories, Facebook Marketplace lets you know what those are. And I think that could really help your sourcing out there. It's personally helped me. I start to look at that to see what is selling well in my area, in the categories that I normally buy and search for. Um, so I'm gonna get that across to you today. If you aren't doing that at the moment, it might be a cool tool to help you with your sourcing moving forward. Um, so it's a big Facebook Marketplace reselling day today. Um, give this video a subscribe and a like if you haven't done so already. Hope you get some enjoyment out of this one. Let me know in the comments below if you do. Uh, let's get straight into it. A lot of info today. Now guys, when it comes to Facebook Marketplace free item listings, I get it, it's more a miss than it is a hit, but every so often you can come across a really good find. Now, I've had a bit of luck today, I've been able to find these five pieces of electronics all for free because a lady was simply upgrading to better equipment and she just wanted to get her old pieces out of the house. Now, I've got these all back to the house and I've tested them all up and they work very, very well. So the resale value is gonna be quite good on eBay. Um, there's a video cassette recorder, there's a printer, there's a set-top box, a DVD player, and another sort of twin tuner as well. And they all go for you know between $50 and $200 on resale. So this has been a great grab. I've been able to get five really good items. I wouldn't say to spend all your time and attention on free item searching, but I would make it part of your sourcing process. Just put an alert onto Facebook and just every so often, just have a bit of a browse and if you do come across an item that you think could be a great free item purchase, you need to go straight away. Like anything on Facebook, the good items go really quick, often within the first hour. So you've just got to strike really fast and get over there and pick up that item. But you don't want to be wasting too much time searching for free listings because a lot of the time they can be pretty average. A um, few things that I've sold in the past that were free um, is a gym, piece of gym equipment. It was a vibration machine. I sold that for $50. Sold a couple of pieces of furniture for free as well. There was an ottoman uh, that I sold for $20. And then there was a glass top TV cabinet that sold for about $25. Um, so you're not getting massive resale value here, but you are certainly getting a bit more um, than if you just simply hadn't done it at all. So I still think there's a place for it, but hopefully this will be my biggest free item uh, flip on Facebook with these five pieces of electronics. They all seem to be working really well. And it just proves the point that you should be doing a search because you just never know what you'll find in the free item section on Facebook. So another topic of conversation that I want to talk about is buying an item on Facebook Marketplace to resell back on a Facebook Marketplace. Should you be doing it? Is it the right thing? Well, I've personally been doing it for a few months and I really haven't run into any negative feedback. I've never had the previous seller message me. I've never had any potential buyers message me saying, hey, I know what you're up to. Um, so because I haven't had that negative feedback, I've just simply continued to do it. Um, and there's a few considerations as to why I think it's okay. Firstly, I, actually what I will say is that I understand that it is, um, a, there, there will be a few differing opinions on this topic out there. And I can see your point of view. I can see why you might think it isn't a good thing to do. Uh, and I can also see why you might want to do it, but you feel tentative about doing it. Um, so the things that I sort of consider when I am actually going through the process of buying and relisting on the same platform is how long did, was the original listing up in the first place? I generally buy my items and I generally buy furniture within the first 30 to 60 minutes of the original listing. So the way I think about it is there probably hasn't been too many eyes from potential buyers on it in the first place before I've been able to strike and go over and buy the item. So I always think about the time of the initial listing because I don't think too many people have seen it. I also don't think that original seller is gonna be searching for the item that they've simply just sold. If they've just sold a pair of white bedside tables, they're probably not searching Facebook Marketplace to buy a pair of white bedside tables. So that's why I don't think any previous sellers have messaged me because they've simply just never seen the same item because they're not searching for it. 
Um, if you are, I guess, nervous about doing it, you could always create a second account, a bit of an alias account and represent the item under a different name, under a different seller's name. I personally have never done it. I don't think I need to do it because I'm not running into any issues, but you could do it if you feel more comfortable doing it that way. Um, the other one is if it's a really unique item, say it's an item that you just, it's so unique, there's only one of a kind out there. I'll generally wait quite a few days before I go and relist that item. But if it's a pair of white Ikea bedside tables with hundreds of them out there getting relisted all the time, I don't have a problem with relisting it pretty quickly um, because there are just so many out there. And if you're taking your own photos and writing your own description, which is the other really crucial aspect, you don't wanna be basically using the photos of the previous seller. You wanna create your own photos, stage whatever item it is in your own home, write your own description as well. And also as another point, don't create any false stories in the description about the item. Don't say that you've had the item for 10 years if you've literally just bought it yesterday. Um, just speak specifically about the item and talk up how good the item is and just leave it at that. I, don't, I think it could really escalate somebody's anger levels if they knew you were upselling it and then lied about your description. So don't go ahead and talk about big outlandish stories, just talk about the item for what it is and the benefits of why people should buy the item. And the other thing I consider as well is the negotiation process originally. Did you just simply buy the item for what that person was asking or did you really knuckle them down to a lower price point? If you've bought the item for $50 and they were asking $50, I personally think you are completely within your right once you've bought that item to do whatever you want with it. If you wanna resell it, you can do that. If you wanna just simply use the item, you can do that. It's now in your possession. It's your item to do whatever you want with. If I've negotiated down to a really low price and I've lowballed them and I've made them do something they potentially didn't really want to commit to, like selling it for $20 when it was originally listed for $50, then I would just wait a few days before I tried to relist that item for $150 um, because I really do think that's a, 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 it's not a nice way to go about the negotiation process when you've got the mindset to go and relist. I still think it's a great way to go about it. You should always be negotiating, but I'd be a bit slower in the process of relisting on the marketplace. Um, so there are all some considerations and topics that I think about. Look, I understand there's a lot of people out there that won't agree and that's completely fine. I've Until I get the negative feedback, until I get the previous sellers and the potential buyers messaging me saying you're reselling you know, an item that was at a lower price previously, I'm just going to continue to do it because I'm playing in a space that is furniture and furniture is generally only sold locally. It's the most convenient way of doing it and it's the most readily available sourcing method for me. I can get it off Marketplace, and really the best place to resell it is on Marketplace. Um, I, don't tend, I don't generally do it with other items. It is generally only furniture for me, but like I said, I've not run into any problems, and I'm gonna to continue to do it, and I do encourage anyone else out there to do it themselves. Uh, but I understand that there are some people out there that might think otherwise. So I thought I'd just address that today, uh, flipping on the same platform. I personally don't mind it and uh, it does get great results. So I'm gonna continue to do it. And the other thing that I wanted to show you guys today was the Facebook Marketplace Insights button that shows you the most popular search categories. So basically what people are searching for the most in every single category that you normally search for. And you can do this by, I'll put it up here for you. You can do this by going into your commerce profile and clicking on Insights. Now above you'll see the sort of statistics on how you're going personally, but if you click on most popular categories, you'll get a running list of the two most popular search terms in each of the categories that you normally search in. So you'll see that Lego is a really popular uh, search term, um, you know, dress and cook eye is a really popular search term. Really there's so many different categories in here and they give you so many different search terms that you know, potentially might help you with your sourcing. If you didn't know that Lego was a really popular searching category for kids toys, you might now start to buy a bit more Lego when you're outsourcing. So let me know in the comments below if this is something you're aware of, if this is something that you're using and you're having success with it, um, or even if you knew nothing of it before and you're seeing this for the very first time. Um, it'd be great to get your thoughts on this sort of an insight. Um, I'm personally only just aware of it recently and I'm starting to use it sort of day by day just to see if it changes and it does, the search terms do change. Um, so I've had a bit of success with it. I've worked out a few different categories that I probably didn't know about otherwise, just by seeing what people are actually searching for through the insights tab on Facebook Marketplace. Um, so hopefully you get a bit of value out of that. Um, it's a pretty easy one to find. There shouldn't be any issues on your app to be able to find that information. Um, and it can be helpful. It might not be, but it's a cool Facebook Marketplace search term that I've started to use a whole lot more. And I think that you could too get some value out of it. 
So that's everything for today, guys. Three topics that I wanted to go through with you to hopefully help you with your Facebook marketplace selling. Uh, if you got any value out of it, remember to hit that like button, give this video a subscribe. It really, really does help a lot. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Hopefully catch you in the next episode. Really appreciate you tuning into this one. Bye-bye.